Well, Sir Vince Cable was the Liberal Democrat MP for Twickenham until 2015 and the Secretary of State for Business as part of the coalition government. He's now fighting to regain his seat at this general election. Very good evening to you. Um, can I just ask you about the Tory plans on social care, which are broken this evening, causing quite a lot of excitement. Uh, do you think they're going to work? They're essentially a less, you know, more generous means test. You'll be keeping up to 100,000 of your house or other possessions. Well, of course, it doesn't do with the immediate problem. I mean, there is an immediate problem of social care because of the cutback in local authority funding, and that's why we've come up with our proposal of the penny on income tax for right. the health service and social care. There's an immediate crisis, and that doesn't address it. They're dealing with the long-term problem, and as your analysis a few minutes ago showed, there are some people who are going to lose out very badly. I mean, people who are taking care in their own home and I I, I don't in a, in a way understand the basic thrust of what their policy because they've held up for eight years or so an, a, an attempt to get a cross-party agreement on the ground that they were opposed to a death tax in other words taking right. money from the property when people die they're now proposing it so, I, that, so that, that you, does seem to be a bit of a U-turn. Does, does that seem to you to be a death tax so it's it's your money they're 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 going to take, you know, they're, they're going to help you pay your bills yeah. by lending you money against that death tax, if, uh, lending well, you money against that house and taking it after. Would you call that a tax or well, is that Well, the principle, I think, is unobjectionable. Un 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 I mean, I, rolling it up you and taking it... it. You support I, well, it? Well, we, we have done in right. the past, but, but I think what the, their current policy seems to be missing is the element of personal insurance, which right. was part of the original attempt to get a cross-party agreement uh, under Andrew Dilnot, right. and that seems to be missing. They, they're means testing the wind fuel allowance, which your party is doing we as well, and they'll that. put that yeah, money we into have care. Um, you're a party that's supporting the triple lock. Right. Now, yeah. in the past, you and Nick Clegg and some others have suggested it's something of an anomaly that it was there when pensioners for pen, when mm. pensioners were poor, or, and that maybe it needs to be reviewed. Why are you why are you sticking by the triple lock? Well, it is generally the case that since the financial crisis, elderly people have done relatively well relative mm. to younger people. But I don't think you solve that problem by pushing pensioners back into poverty. I mean, until the triple lock was introduced, we, we had a problem that very large numbers of people on the state pension were falling below the basic poverty line, were getting into means-tested benefits, were not claiming... Well, we've dealt with that now because we've, 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 well, we've, we've, dealt we've with put it. the, so the we, state so pension should, up we've dealt so with it. So You don't have to keep it up forever and ever, we do should, you? Well, I don't quite see what the problem is with the triple lock. I mean, there, there is one element of it that has been controversial, which is the commitment to 2%. Uh, minimum increase and that potentially was a problem if you have a world of no inflation but we're moving away from that world now I mean the inflation this year is expected could, to be above the Bank of England level and I that doesn't present a problem right, so it's, it's probably not going to cost much over the, the idea of a pension anyway. guarantee seems to me a civilized and sensible one right uh, can I suggest to you one of the issues you have is that you're a party that's trying to face in two slightly different directions to these southwestern seats quite elderly populations in some cases Mm. Um, and also to a kind of slightly younger demographic, more metropolitan demographic, mm. uh, different kind of voters in other seats. Is that why you've got the triple lock in there, to be blunt? To make sure you've got something to pitch to the voters, of the, the older voters of well, the it's, South? Well, they're both legitimate interests. And right. We have a large elderly population who, in the past, experienced significant problems of pensioner poverty. That problem was substantially alleviated by a reform that the Liberal Democrats right. pressed for in the coalition, and we want to keep it. Mm. Um, let's talk about Brexit, because I want to be clear. If I... If I I'm in favour of Brexit, I'm pretty strongly in favour of it. I really should not vote for the Lib Dem, should I? I mean, if so, that would be the correct advice. Well, th there are many other issues, and there are many people who support Brexit but may not be happy with the UKIP-style Brexit that the Prime Minister has committed us to. In other words, withdrawing from the single market and the customs union. But that you can't, was have not, it, you can't sort was... of have it both ways, because you can't say you should vote for us if you're for Remain but you should also potentially vote for us if you're Brexit. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Well, I, 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 Again, you're facing it's, it's sort of a, both ways, No, aren't not you? at all. It's a different issue, right? People have had that vote of remain Brexit. We've had the referendum. A decision has been made to leave. We respect that. We're now but, dealing with a separate problem, right. but which then is why what happens putting, in two years' why time. Why are you putting remain on the ballot when you have your second referendum on it? That doesn't sound like you've accepted the... 
No, it, it does. We're, we're dealing with a different question. I, I thought That's Tony Blair. Tony question. Blair. Let, let me just explain. Tony Blair had a very nice metaphor. He said, "Look, we, we've made a decision collectively as a country by a narrow majority to move house, right?" But we don't know where we're going. We don't know what the new house looks like. If at the end of the day we're left with a dwelling which is appalling and it's full of dry rot and rising damp and it is uninhabitable, then the option surely has to be of going back to where we started. The option a has to be. New house, rather than <laughs> we need to leave it there. Vince Cable, thanks very Thank much you. indeed.